the moment you have all been waiting for. Javante Tank Davis, Ryan Garcia goes down April 22nd. I break the fight down like only I can. This is your boy, JG. This is the punch report. In this video, I'll give you three keys to victory for both combatants, an X factor, and one thing they desperately need to work on to ensure victory. Let's go. Like I said before, welcome back to the channel, y'all. This is your boy, JG. This is the punch report. Let's just get right into the content right now. Ryan Garcia, Tank Davis, Tank Davis, Ryan Garcia. The breakdown is here. I'm going to start with Ryan Garcia, key to victory number one. This one's going to be obvious, but it's going to be his speed. And I'm going to get into detail. Before I put the clip up here, let's work through some things. Ryan Garcia is an incredibly fast-handed fighter. Speed equals power. He's demonstrated great power, knocking out some combatants brutally. What comes to mind is Fonseca, um, Romero Duno, among others. He's established that when it comes to delivering punches with speed, he is a top-tier fighter. But there's another component to his speed that he's going to have to hone in on if he's going to have any measure of success getting that speed off against a fighter with the elk of a Javante Tank Davis. And that speed plus fluidity. One of my primary concerns when I think about Ryan Garcia is, while he is fast, he's extremely telegraphed. Some shots come very, very wide. Um, and he's he only has a fastball. No varying speeds. See guys like Adrian Broner in his prime at 140 pounds. Great job at varying speeds on delivering punches. Andre Ward's another one that comes to mind off top. But if you take a look at the clip right here, this is against Javier Fortuna. Now, you can say what you want about Fortuna, but it's a good opportunity to see what it looks like when Ryan Garcia is putting it all together, deploying his speed, but also utilizing fluidity. He's going to throw a combination right here. Very simple combination. One, two, three, basic stuff you learn right when you get into the sport of boxing. However, when you're throwing more than two punch combinations, you're giving yourself a greater opportunity to get something more meaningful. He throws a one, two, three combination here. Take a look at it again. Lands or Fortuna beautifully and puts himself in a position to continue to do significant damage. If Ryan Garcia can figure out a way to add this level of fluidity to his already existing and well-knowing speed, he puts himself in a position to make Tank Davis work that much harder because the risk goes up that much more, understanding if he's loose, he's fluid with his shots, and he's varying the speeds, it's going to be a tough task for Javante Tank Davis to work through and overcome. Not to say that he can't, but this is the first key to victory for Ryan Garcia. Going on to number two. This one's another one of the ones that you might consider obvious. It's the left hook. Now, I'm not talking about the one where he closes his eyes, sticks his chin way up in the air, and just swings as hard as he can. That's not the left hook I'm mentioning. It's the left hook that I'm going to show here in these two clips. It's the left hook to the body, thrown with deception, Subtle, subtle deception that stopped Luke Campbell. And it's the one that he utilized as well to drop Javier Fortuna, as previously mentioned, in their bout. So let's take a look at the clip here. It looks like you're selling hard upstairs. It's starting from a leaping distance, but he can throw it tight and compact and go down to the body. It's a bit risky because the chin's up, but it's a beautiful shot. I believe a shot like this can also be successful against a guy like Tank Davis, despite the height discrepancy because you're dealing in deceptions. Now, setting it up is one thing, but if he can threaten enough upstairs with good, clean left hooks that he's landing, whether the tank defends them or not is irrelevant, but he can threaten enough upstairs, he can get this shot to tank. Tank is a slight guy. Ryan Garcia does have a distinct size advantage. Being able to get to tank's slight body with a tough, tough shot that's coming with a lot of momentum could spell trouble for Tank Davis, make him have to climb off the deck, Possibly put him in a position where maybe he can't recover. The sneaky left hook is going to be money if he can get it set up to the body against a guy like Tank Davis. Which leads me to my last and final point. Three keys victory, Ryan Garcia, right this second. It is the body work. If you headhunt Tank Davis, ask Rolly Romero what happens to you. You just get knocked out. So you have to be able to vary it to the body. Now, as far as his right hand concern ryan garcia hasn't demonstrated a very educated right hand up until this point but that left hook to the body is there if you can add that to the toolbox start chipping away at the body from an intelligent perspective understanding range and distance not leaving that chin in the air i know that's a lot of ifs but it's a real thing to slow a guy down like tank davis 
who at times, if he loses respect for you, will walk forward and he will figure out a way to finish you if he can't finish you off of a counter shot. Ryan Garcia has to figure out a way to invest in the body intelligently, especially with that sneaky left hand, to put damage or, as Teddy Atlas would say, water in the basement against a guy like Tank Davis, slow him down, slow his momentum, discourage him any way that you can, and put yourself in a position to possibly win on points down the road. Now, with that being said, stay tuned to the end of this video. I will give my final prediction and how I see the fight playing out. Now, before we move over to Tank Davis, I want to give you my one concern that I have for Ryan Garcia, the thing that he absolutely has to clean up or it doesn't matter about the previous th three things that I just mentioned. And here it is. It's a combo, but it's overall defense and footwork. I'm not breaking news right now. You can go to a number of pages who broke this fight down, and they're going to tell you the same thing. Extremely flat-footed, moves in a straight line, doesn't understand you know, a fish hook or a J-step, whatever you want to call it, on the retreat. Oftentimes, you'll just see him shell up and cover and pray. Tank Davis is a very accurate puncher. Economical, but he has incredibly high accuracy. I think he's in... He's plus 42% on power punches landed um, against his combatants. Guessing on defense against Tank Davis will get you stopped brutally, upstairs or to the body. The footwork is instrumental in that. It's what keeps you alive, whether you're initiating offense or whether you're trying to intelligent, intelligently defend yourself. You're going to get hit with shots. That happens. It's boxing. How you respond to the, the coming shots thereafter determines on whether you just got hit with a shot and then you can defend well and parry and do what you need to do or you just cover up, misread, and get stopped to the body, i.e. Mario Barrios, um, ended up in a position where you can't climb off the deck. But those are the three keys for victory for Ryan Garcia. So what do we have for him, for him as a quick recap? Ryan Garcia's speed, the sneaky left hand, and his work to the body, clean up the defensive footwork, put yourself in a position to win down the road. Now, let's transition over Javante Tank Davis. We already know what it is with Tank Davis. First and foremost, let's just talk, talk about the power. And it's power from a variety perspective. He can shut your lights off. Let's take a look at the clips right here. That's obvious. That's, we know he has that. But what's even more fascinating, uh, for those of you who did not see it, it's the ability to punch a, pro a professional prize fighter in his head, have him go to his corner and tell his team, I can't see, and then retire on the stool. It's a combination of damaging power and power that can separate you from your senses. In the sport of boxing today, I am of the opinion really only Deontay Wilder, and he's number one, are punching people with the kind of power consistently that's just shutting their lights off. You don't even get hit by the shot, but it's in the back of your mind that if I make a mistake, I'm going to be looking at a corner man, ask me if I'm okay, yanking my mouth guard out of my mouth. Gervonta Tank Davis's power is a weapon that creates cognitive overload. Constantly thinking about this one aspect of another fighter's game naturally puts you in a precarious situation, especially if you're a fighter that lacks defensive prowess like a Ryan Garcia. I think a guy like Shakur Stevenson or obviously Floyd back in the day, they fought guys or have or will fight guys with big power. They can figure out ways to mitigate that with their defense while amounting their own offense. Gervonta Tank Davis and his power is just going to be a force to be wrecked. The second key to victory for Gervonta Tank Davis, and this, this is great because it leads right in beautifully from the power, is his ability to cre create offense for himself. It's one of the things that I'm super critical about when I think about Bud Crawford, and there are not a lot of things to be critical about when I think about him. But he needs the opposition to make that mistake and then he's going to capitalize it and destroy you and get you up out of there, embarrass you, damage you. If he gets you up against the ropes, it's a wrap. But you have to make the mistake first. Terrence Bud Crawford at times struggles to just initiate offense. If you look at this clip right here, this is late in the Mario Barrios fight where it's widely discussed and considered that he had probably lost the majority of the rounds, if not all the rounds, going into the 10th and 11th round before the stoppage. Once he figured out, one, I'm in trouble, I might lose his bout. Two, I don't think Barrios can hurt me. You see him work his way on the inside, high guard, showing slight angles, gets off to his right-hand side, which we were my left, and delivers a vicious shot to the body. He did not need to wait for Barrios to make a mistake. He did not need to wait for Barrios to 
overextend on a shot and he gets countered. He went and found that shot on his own intelligently. It's a bit risky when you come out a guy with a high guard, but Javante Tank Davis has the ability to create offense for himself. Another example, if you take a look at this clip right here, Hector Luis Garcia, the fight, sent the fight sequence before the end fight sequence. Javante Tank Davis is just peppering Hector Luis Garcia with shots. And, you know, to be respectful, Hector Luis Garcia, you know, he's not going to be rated, in my opinion, ahead of a, a Ryan Garcia. Quite honestly, Ryan Garcia probably might get him up out of there, too. So I want to make sure I'm being fair in that assessment. But the overall point of the clip that we're seeing right here is Tank Davis can go and get offense. And so the ability to, one, counter like a Rolly Romero, if you take a look at the knockout here, counters really knocks him out. The beautiful part about that counter is he had been landing that pretty consistently, that left hand, throughout the duration of that bout. He finally just caught him perfectly because he's an intelligent fighter. The ability to create offense on your own provides another wrinkle that Ryan Garcia defensively has to think about and consider as he approaches deploying his own offense. Because quite honestly, his inability to kind of defend intelligently gets in the way of deploying his offense in a way that he would probably like to. Tank Davis is not everyone else that he's, that he's fought. Mistakes against Tank get you knocked out, point blank period. Moving on to the third and final key to victory for Tank Davis, his ability to win within the exchange. So what does that mean? What's the easiest way to get hit in a fight? Throw a shot. Sorry about that technical difficulty, but like I was saying before, the ability to win within the exchange. Now, there are several clips here that I would love to show, but because Showtime Sports will come for me, I will not, but I'll do my best to explain. Javante Tank Davis can get into the pocket throw shots, intercept, catch, parry, slip, and roll shots, and get right back to the offense in a way that I've never seen um, Ryan Garcia execute. Quite frankly, Ryan Garcia needs to live in the front. If his, op if his opposition has an opportunity to get shots off on him or mount any real offense, um, he just really shows up or he tries to frame and he goes straight back. Um, I've, I, I've, I've yet to really see Ryan Garcia land a clean shot, get hit, get back defensive, and turn that directly into offense. Or get back defensive and turn that back into offense, excuse me. And so Tank Davis is brilliant at this. And this might be where the fight gets interesting. If it's a scenario where they're in the center of the ring and shots, shots start flying, this could be where Ryan Garcia could potentially meet his demise. He doesn't shine in these areas Distance is his friend. Tank Davis wants to be at middle distance to the inside. Work beautifully, but Ryan Garcia cannot get tricked into a flat-out firefight where they're trading shots. It favors him not at all. Despite his speed, despite his power, despite his ability to, you know, throw crazy fast, those things will not matter in the exchange perspective because Tank Davis is polished as a defensive fighter. I think a lot of times people get confused and say, you know, Tank, you know, Tank gets hit a lot, you know, but, and that's fine. You know, if that's the assessment that you're making, but I need you to provide context to the assessment as well. Tank Davis has identified that his opposition cannot really hurt him or do much with him. So he's going to go high guard, walk him down and brutalize him. Look at the defensive posture that he took against Rolando Rolly Romero. You did not see a lot of high guard. You saw a lot of footwork, a lot of moving to his right, which would be my left away from the power of Rolly, setting up his own shot. This could be a defensive method that he utilizes against Ryan Garcia as he tries to walk him into a shot. Now, Ryan Garcia could play careful and safe, live behind the jab, and try to catch him coming in with a left hand. But as I mentioned before, Gervonta Tank Davis can go and find angles and create his offense on his own. Now, what's my primary concern now that we've covered the three keys to victory, which will be his power, his ability to win the exchanges, and his ability to create his own offense. What is the area that gives me pause when I think about Javante Dank Davis? The one red flag, the thing that he needs to desperately clean up before going into this bout with Ryan Garcia. And that is this, the tremendous slow start. Like I said before in this video, accurate power puncher, ridiculously economical. People say the same things uh, of other fighters who've kind of fallen into this pattern. He's, he's gathering information, processing, studying, yada, yada, yada. 
I'm with all of that. But when I get into my final prediction here in a second, you'll understand why it's important for maybe Tank Davis to kind of step outside of his comfort zone and apply pressure early to just kind of offset what I'm about to tell you now. I gave you the three keys for each combatant for victory. I gave you an area of concern that I have, one for Ryan Garcia, one for Tank Davis. Here's my final prediction. Ryan Garcia has the tools to get this done. I just don't see it. However, if he does get it done, he has he has two and a half rounds to beat Javante Tank Davis. That is it. Ryan Garcia's window of opportunity is essentially rounds one, two, and half of three to get it done. He's got to get it done emphatically. The overall boxing ability and thunderous power of Tank Davis, I believe, carries the day in this particular bout. I have Tank Davis getting it done nine or ten by stoppage, and I'm going with to the body or TKO, a swarming situation. I think that if Ryan Garcia comes in and gets knocked out to the chin, that he didn't really want to win this fight because that's unacceptable knowing you have major defensive deficiencies. You keep that chin in the air, and that's easy work for a guy like Tank Davis. You got to make him get it a different type of way. With that being said, Tank Davis, round 9 or 10, stops to the body or TKO stoppage. Ryan Garcia does have those tools to get this done. I just don't see it. His opportunity exists within the first three rounds of this bout. Tank Davis, a notoriously slow starter, that's not going to get it done in this one. He's got to do more or he's going to be ridiculously defensive and boring and then turn it up later, which we've seen him do. This is your boy, JG. Let me know how I did in this video. Let me know your opinion on this bout. This is The Punch Report. We out.